Hello Internet, I'm here with another RPG game video. If you don't know what RPG game is, it is a little mini framework for making your own web-based games, any kind of role-playing-ish game you want. Uh, you can find source code for everything in the description below, including the uh, both the blank to get started with, you could follow along with this video, or the code that has everything from this video. So what I'm going to do in this video is kind of small compared to previous videos. I'm going to do a, a confetti, an animated confetti effect. So let me show you what I found on the internet. This. I thought this was a fun thing. I, I was I found it doing a thing for work, actually, even though we don't make fun games for work. Um, and I thought, oh, this would be really cool to put into an RPG game as well. Uh, so unlike previous videos where we need like, you know, added inventory and, and uh, greenhouses where we need like database changes and all this stuff, this is going to be comparatively simple. We want to use this JavaScript library. The trick is that it's a JavaScript library. An RPG game is a C Sharp uh, Blazor app. There is no JavaScript uh, to be seen, but in fact, there is a lot. Blazor includes its own JavaScript. And with Blazor, you can do any JavaScript things you want. You can call any JavaScript functions. You can write JavaScript and then from C Sharp say, hey, go run that JavaScript function and do a JavaScript thing. And that's great for us because it means we can use all these existing JavaScript libraries that exist. Blazor is pretty new. You're not going to find a Blazor confetti library. I don't know, maybe you will, but <laughs> I haven't looked specifically. But there are many, many, many more JavaScript libraries out there than there are Blazor libraries. Um, and there are some that would be really hard to integrate into Blazor, some JavaScript libraries that would be very difficult. Uh, but this is one that won't be. This is going to be really easy, and, and we, can, we can just plug it in and have this fun confetti effect. Uh, so let's do that. I do want to give a little word of caution first. Um, so we're going to go through this install process. Uh, because we are using Blazor, uh, Blazor, like a lot of, of frameworks, um, like Angular, or a lot of web frameworks, I should say, front-end frameworks like Angular, or React, or Vue, they need to have a lot of control over the HTML. And if you, and if you look at the HTML here, you can see, like, what in the world are all these comments? Um, what are these funny attributes on like main and stuff? These are all things that Blazor is using to keep track of, of like dynamically loaded components that might throw in. Like these are all placeholders where it might decide to put in something. And if you delete one of these or add them or mess with them, you can end up breaking the page. It stops working. Obviously, you're not going to come in here and start doing that. But what if you're using a JavaScript library that does start to do something else in the HTML? So you have to be careful about what kinds of JavaScript like extra programs you use. Um, or scripts, I should say, whatever, they're programs. Um, but you just have to be a little careful. And, and if you start to have issues, it could be that that JavaScript library you're using is doing too much in here in, in the HTML, in the DOM. So yeah, this is, uh, there are pros and cons to everything, right? This is a con of using a, a really opinionated large framework like Blazor, like Angular, or like even React or Vue, is that, right, you're kind of making this promise of that framework, you get control of, of the HTML. Uh, not me, not some other <laughs> library. So um, this one is going to be safe to use as a pretty small script. Uh, we can take a look at it. There are a couple ways um, to, to kind of evaluate, <laughs> evaluate whether or not it's safe, uh, which I'll, I'll talk about. Um, but anyway, this one is good. This one's going to be good. Uh, other things. So let's go through these install instructions. The first thing it's going to say, and this is common for a lot of JavaScript libraries, it's going to say use npm, use yarn, um, I feel like NPM is the much more popular one, but this library, the author, seems to prefer Yarn, since that's the example they give. Um, but anyway, these are command line tools for managing JavaScript libraries for a project. Uh, there are ways that you can integrate NPM or Yarn with a Blazor server app. You can Google about that. I'm not going to do that for this video. So we're going to do this alternative, which is just to throw the JavaScript, throw a tag straight into um, our project. Something else you could do, a third option that they're not telling you, but, but is available to you, is you could just copy paste this um, JavaScript. And uh, in terms of evaluating, like, is it going to be compatible, the size is one indication. This is a very small library. And so the chances that it, I mean, there's not a guarantee that it's going to mess with the HTML in ways that Blazor doesn't like, but the chances are, are certainly reduced. This is doing a very small thing. Um, so, that, so that gives us a little bit of comfort, even without like getting into the details of what all is it doing. And again, just because it's small doesn't mean it's safe, but it, you know, it's not doing a ton. The bigger it is, the more likely it's doing something like a lot. So anyway, let's not go that route. You could, you could again, you could control C this and, and put it somewhere in here. Um, but I'm going to go ahead with this. This is probably the more common approach of we're going to pull it off of this CDN network. It's a content delivery 
network. Again, pros and cons to everything. The advantage of using one of these is they, they probably have great uptime. And if other people use the Confetti library on their website and have already downloaded this, then they don't have to download it when they come and visit you. Confetti library, probably less likely, but other more popular scripts uh, like jQuery, which you shouldn't use with Blazor. That is an example of a library that would fight a lot with Blazor. But anyway, the more popular it is, the more likely that you've made your site faster by using a CDN because the user has already visited another site where they, where they got this. So anyway, so pros and cons to everything. Um, that is one pro. So let's go ahead and do that. Throw it in the bottom here. And again, it should be thrown in the bottom. The order that you do these script tags matter. Um, in our case, it is not important to the app that the confetti is loaded. So we want the rest of the app to get loaded um, before it tries to get the confetti. The confetti is not more important. Uh, the other thing they say, how do we use this thing? Um, we won't need the import command because we're not using npm, uh, but we will, we will do this stuff um, and maybe even this stuff. So they're telling us, how do we use this thing? Well, we got to make a new instance of JS Confetti. This looks pretty C-sharpy. If you don't know a lot of JavaScript, this probably probably still follow along. Uh, and then we call a method, add confetti. I'm thinking I would like to add confetti when you explore. Perfect. Thank you for demonstrating for <laughs> this for me. When something rad happens. So <laughs> you you know maybe you want it when you're your character levels up, or you find a new thing, or you open a treasure box. I don't know. We've had videos for other types of events that maybe would be cool to add confetti for. Um, for the base thing here, there's this one in three chance that when you click explore, it says your pet found something rad, plus the experience points. For that event, that's when I want to throw confetti, uh, not when, you know, oh, they didn't find anything. So this is telling us, you know, okay, how do we add confetti? Uh, but we're going to want to tie that to some logic, and so we'll get to that later. So for now, all we really want is this part. So let's get that in here. Um, and we could throw it in in like a, like a script block here and make it and start doing all the JavaScript here. But that's going to get messy in the long term. We're going to end up with like just a huge amount of JavaScript. I would like to keep everything related to confetti kind of together. So what I'm going to do is not put that here. And I will do a script tag. And if you want something to load out of your own WW root thing. Uh, with Blazor in particular, you do tilde. And it's going to go and replace that behind the scenes to say, ah, oh, that's your WW root. And the reason that, that they have this and you don't just name the path explicitly is because you could be in a situation where you're pulling in JavaScript from other libraries um, and it's not clear what the path is. So, whatever. If, if you go, you can, another thing to learn, you can look at Blazor. How would I include JavaScript from some other Blazor app? you know, bundle, NuGet package that includes its own JavaScript. How would you do that? And you'll see all the stuff in the tilde and et cetera, et cetera. So all we need to know for now is that it is a tilde. And we can see this little bit too, where it's like, oh, CSS images, CSS images. Yes, that, that is matching what we what we have. I'm going to make a new folder called JS, and we'll just put a thing called confetti in it. So let's do that. Let's make a folder called, uh, whoops, I failed to click, JS. Let's put our new script uh, called confetti. And we'll put this thing in, uh, new confetti.js. Uh, so you may have noticed too, I put a semicolon at the end. In a lot of places in JavaScript, the semicolon isn't required. Uh, I think in, are there any places where you have to reconfuse it? You should be putting semicolons at the end of your JavaScript lines like you do in uh, C Sharp, because there are some times when you need to. I'm almost positive there's some times where you actually have to or you confuse it. Um, but for a lot of times you don't, and JavaScript kind of figures it out anyway. Let's not rely on figuring it out anyway. We're going to trip ourselves up. So I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of my line, even if it's maybe optional in this case. Um, the other thing we're going to want, again, we would like to call JS confetti add confetti, but we don't want to just do it here. Then it'll just happen when the page starts up and never again. We want to be able to make this happen from the C sharp side. And the way to do that, with Blazor is we need to make some new function that we're going to call. So yeah, add confetti is a fine name, and that function will contain the logic we want, which in this case is get that JS confetti and then call add confetti on it. And that'll make it very easy for us to call the function within Razor. And if we wanted extra parameters, you may see that, you know, for add confetti, oh, you can pass some emojis or some colors or some ra radius for the confetti uh, sizes. So all those things you could add as extra parameters up here. You could say, I want colors, I want some sort of radius, and then you could, you know, confetti radius 
radius, whatever. So you can you can set that stuff up. I won't go that far for this video. Let's just do the basic effect. But that is a reason, right? You might say, why is it just a one line function? Well, you might put more in here. <laughs> so it might not just be a one line function. Um, and it does help to not have to reference this JS confetti thing in Razor, which we'll see. And we'll see it right now. Let's go do it. So uh, sorry, not host. Let's go to the uh, house. Don't know why that's selected. And let's find here's the do explore. And here's where right, I have it to do make your own game. But for the out of the box, it's pick one of these th three things at random, something happens, something awesome happens or nothing happens, we want something awesome. So here's a something awesome here is where we would like to say, let's throw some confetti on the page. How do we do that? Well, we're going to have to ask for a new little service. Let's scroll back up. So here are some other services that we inject. It's a service because it's a thing that we inject. Mm, I think that's a good enough description. Uh, there might be uh, something that, that description misses. But anyway, uh, if we want services in, in a page like this, we need to ask uh, Blazor to inject it. And the one we need in this case is IJS runtime. There it is. I knew it was something JS runtime. And GitHub autocomplete. AI thing says, why don't you call it JS runtime? And that sounds good to me. So I'm going to go with that name. So this is the thing we need if we want to call out to do any sort of JavaScript stuff. Um, and, and so if you I don't know if you if you're familiar with JavaScript, and you're like, Oh, how do I do like local storage, you could go and get a local storage NuGet package, it's just going to do JavaScript under the hood. But if you know JavaScript, you can probably figure it out. You're like, perfect. I know here's my window into the JS world, I can go write my JS code. And, and do all the JavaScript things I, I know and love geolocation, local storage, whatever, If you know, JavaScript, you know, it. if you don't, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> so this is interesting, GitHub uh, as AI copilot thing is saying, how about invoke void async play a sound awesome. And yeah, it makes sense conceptually, but that's not what we're going to do. So we are going to do invoke void async. There's two things here invoke async is if you're calling a JavaScript function that uh, return some value, you know, maybe you've asked it to do some work and give you a value back, then you would do invoke async. If you don't expect a value back, then it's invoke void async. So that's the one we're going to do. And then we just name the function. We just call we just type the name and hope that we got the name right. So this part is a little unfortunate, right? We just have to do add confetti and do add confetti here. And the reason I say that's an unfortunate is what if I typed it wrong or what, right? We don't see that it's used. The IDE isn't going to know that this function is used or what if you renamed it? Uh, you're not going to know that you broke this over here. And this is just I don't know, may, maybe someday blazer will make interacting with JavaScript a little safer. Uh, but for now, we just have to type the string, make sure we typed it right and make sure that if we ever change one or the other that you know, we're, we're changing both. So that's a little unfortunate, but there it is. And unless I mess something up, I think that's it. Uh, you'll notice I threw an await in front. And that's because this is an async method. So we await it same as when we you know, previous videos, when we've done database work, same thing, you've got to wait, you don't know how long the JavaScript is going to take. Uh, so let's try exploring. Perfect. I love how it's demonstrated, demonstrating it for me on the first try, we found something rad, plus the experience points. There you go. Didn't find anything. Great, found something rad again. So there you go, we've got, <laughs> there's our confetti. I love how often this happens. It's a one in three chance. Wonderful. Um, and there you go, confetti effect. Uh, there are probably other effects you could find out there. Maybe there's things to like camera shake or, you know, flash of colors, or I don't know, you know, you bubbles go up the screen, snow falls, whatever, you can find lots of these kinds of uh, animation effects that individually are pretty simple. Uh, but you can throw into your game and, and in combination, especially, you know, make something really cool, make something visually interesting. Because um, yes, as, as we've kind of established in previous videos, uh, my visual skills as an artist are, are not there, right? I'm not an artist by trade. I'm good at making rectangles. So, <laughs> uh, but I can tell you there's libraries with people who are much more uh, artistically inclined and we can certainly leverage those and make the game look cooler. Um, yeah, so there you go. Anyway, that's it. Fun, fun uh, confetti. We'll see if I can get a confetti effect again. Um, if you'd like to see how to add other things to uh, your browser game using this RPG game thing, again, I've done videos on like greenhouses where you grow plants or inventory or cooking or stores, all these other things. Most of them are more functional, right? This was more of a visual thing. Um, but maybe I'll try and do more visual things in the future as well. Uh, but anyway, there's a, a link to that probably on screen now and in the description below. So uh, anyway, that's it. Thank you very much and goodbye.
Darn. I was hoping to get one more. 